Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a Will I Buy It? Where we're going to be discussing these hot topic new and upcoming makeup releases. <laughs> there has been some controversy to talk about. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at this upcoming Natasha Denona mini starlet palette in true Natasha Denona fashion. This was leaked before it was announced, so we don't yet have a release date. <sighs> Listen here, I understand this is boring and it's nothing revolutionary, but this is just so pretty to me. <laughs> This is a yes. Yes, yes, yes. I want it right now. I think it's so flipping pretty. I just don't have any problems with it. I love that we've got like the three mattes, two shimmers that are going to work beautifully together. These mini palettes from Natasha Denona really never disappoint. The shimmers look like they are they're giving us what we want them to from Natasha Denona. They look intense. They look like they're just gonna, this whole color story is just a me. It's my cup of tea. It's right up my street. I think it's stunning. It's just, yes, it's understated. Yes, it's pretty soft glam makeup, but that's what I live for. And this is absolutely coming home with me. It's just, it's pretty. It's the prettiness, the soft femininity. <laughs> yes, please. Next up, from something that is absolutely me to a T, to something that is like my worst nightmare. <laughs> It's this lipstick from Fenty Beauty. Obviously, we've been inundated with like Barbie releases in the last month or so, and they there is no sign of them slowing down. This is my literal worst nightmare when it comes to a lipstick colour. This sort of bright pink fuchsia like electric neon pink. No, oh no, it's my worst colour for lipstick that there is. Okay, I'd love it as a top, I'd love it as a bodysuit. On the lips, absolutely not. Like if there was a, a, a ranking of like the shades that I like for my lipstick, this is the absolute dead last one. Other than like maybe, I don't know, black or gray, or I don't know. They're, okay, it's like third from bottom, all right? I don't like it. I'm definitely not buying it. It's my nightmare. But that being said, it's going to look stunning on everybody else. I think I, I get it. I see the attraction. Just not for me because I can't stand it. I hate that shade. Next up, let's talk about something that was a slap right in my face with a wet kipper this month. <laughs> literally. And that is these RMS Supernatural Radiance Serum. So these are SPF. They have SPF 30 in it and decent whack, but tinted, tinted SPFs. Okay. I was very excited about these. I was very excited. This glowy, beautiful tinted SPF that I can put in my handbag and top up. And then I read that they aren't coming anytime soon because, I don't know if you're aware, I learned this fairly recently, that there are very different laws when it comes to like, I mean, when it comes to lots of things, but when it comes to SPF, the difference between like what is approved for use in the US versus Europe, the UK, other countries, very different. And so apparently RMS formulated this in accordance to the US laws, and we aren't allowed it here. <sighs> Slap me on the face and call me Judy. My flabber was ghasted. I was very disappointed. I was already, my money was there. It was, I was holding it out to them and they <laughs> slapped it out my hand. <laughs> it was so rude and offensive. So it was going to be a yes, but now it's a no through no fault or choice of my own. On the slightly good news was that I did see them saying that they are working on, you know, formulations that they can sell in Europe and any other places that aren't allowed this formulation, but not until next year. And I'm not going to lie to you, I'll be bored of it by then. I will be sick of waiting. 48 different other products that are similar to this will have come out in that time. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to wait that long, to be honest. I'm impatient, but I would have bought you had you have been available to me, so... That's a lesson for us all. Next up, Patrick Tarr has released three new shades of his blush duos. So these are one cream, one powder blush duos that alarmingly, 
Patrick recommends we apply in the opposite order that we've ever been told. He loves us to go powder first and then dabity dab bit of the cream on the top. And let me tell you, when I first heard these words out of Patrick Tarr's mouth, I was horrified. I was alarmed. It just went against everything I knew to this day. What? We're doing it the other? What? And let me tell you, I trust Patrick Tarr with my life, with my face, any day of the week. So I did what I was told and by some strange magic, it actually works and I love these. My favourite so far was She's Blushing, which I think is absolutely delightful, gorgeous. I actually must pull it back out because I haven't used it for ages. I've forgotten how glorious it is. These new shades, oh, suits you, sir. Now, the one that stands out for me is She's Flushed, the boring one, okay? That's me. That's me all over. I don't know what to tell you. I love it, it's glorious. It looks very close to She's Blushing, which is my fave to date, but a little peachier. <laughs> it's got my name written all over it. I don't think these are available here yet as I speak. They were, I think, on Patrick's website and the US Sephora site, but not the UK Sephora site. They continue to let us down and disappoint us on a daily basis. But I know it'll be here soon. I will absolutely pick that one up as long as they don't make us wait too long because like I said earlier, I've got the attention span of a gnat, okay? And if you make me wait for like a month, I'll have forgotten it exists. So it must come soon or never. Those are your options. Now, Patrick also came out with a load of new shades for his lip cream, which again, I loved this when it came out and my complaint at the time, my one complaint at the time, because they're delightful, was the shade range, not enough colours, giving us loads more, loads of them. They're coming out of our ears now. So I think I have, is it? I think I have, she's independent. I have a couple of these. And again, I need to pull them out because I've forgotten all about them. And I think they're lovely, very nice and creamy and comfortable, beautiful amount of pigmentation. I really like them. Very, very nice, nice shiny finish. Definitely gonna get a couple of these as well, as long as, again, they hurry up and come here, please. I reckon I would go for flushed and blushing, maybe. Those are the two that are kind of calling my name. I'm not sure about shy. I think that might be a little light for me, but I love these. Count me in for a couple of new shades, okay? Put me down, put my name down on the list. Let's talk about this new Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Skin Tint. Oh my goodness, we've been on a journey, okay? Or oh, I have. I, I don't know if you were there, but I went on a journey with this. When I saw this released, I've really, really been wanting to give Bob Bobbi Brown the brand, not the lady. She's fine. She's no longer with us. No. Wait, she hasn't died, okay? Just to be clear she's no longer um, affiliated with the brand that still carries her name. I just, I need to be absolutely clear. She is alive, well, and thriving at Jones Road now, okay? <laughs> what I meant was she no longer works with the brand that has her name. <laughs> this is a disaster, even by my standards, but we move on. So as I was saying, I've really been wanting to give Bobby Brown the brand, Bobby Brown herself still alive, remember? I've really been wanting to try more of their products, to give their products more of a try because it's just one that for some reason I can't connect with. I There's a disconnect, okay? I see their products and on paper, I feel like if that said Charlotte Tilbury, Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, Laura Mercier on it, I'd be excited about it, but from Bobby Brown, for some reason, there's something that just doesn't tickle my pickle, float my boat, get my heart racing. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. I just haven't ever really warmed up to the brand. I've tried a couple of things, they were fine, but nothing ever really makes me want to like try more, you know? I don't know if it's just me, but that's how I feel. And I can only be honest with you. That's all we have after all. So I have, that has been, you know, in the back of my mind as a goal this year, give Bobby Brown more chances, okay? And this came along. Now their vitamin enriched face base, their priming moisturizer type of product. I really enjoyed it. I've tried, that's one of the products I've tried and loved from the brand. Really nice, very, very popular product, particularly if you have a dry skin as a primer, people love it. They can't get enough. So a tinted moisturizer of the same name, it's bound to be fantastic, you think, right? I literally went to, I don't know, 
Selfridges didn't go there, I went onto their website, is what I'm saying, with the full intention of purchasing this and reviewing it. And then I went and I went through all of the shades and they are all extremely orange slash yellow of like a Simpson level. Okay, I struggle with very warm tones because I'm I have an olive undertone. So if something is really warm, it's going to look bizarre, bonkers on me. So I can't go super warm. I need like neutrals. If we don't have any olive shades, I need to go neutral because otherwise anything else is a very large mistake on my part. So I checked out the shades. I thought, oh, let's look at this one. Let's look at, oh, okay. Let's look at medium too. Let's look at, they're all very, very warm, very, very yellow. And I literally can't, I can't buy that and put it on my face with any kind of excitement, okay? I feel like it's going to look horrendous on me. I don't know what's going on with these. My one prayer and hope that I have left in my heart is that perhaps these photos were taken under very bizarre lighting and it, they're not all as warm as they look, but I don't know that I, I don't know that that's going to be the case. They all look extremely warm and yellow and I, can't, I couldn't do it. So I pulled the plug, but I, I really wanted to try something from Bobby Brown and love it, but they just won't let me. They've got to meet me halfway, you know, making it too hard. Next up, holy flipping moly you know i mean that says it all these blushes from chanel chanel really i mean i've seen some sneak peeks we've all seen their highlighters that are upcoming which i cannot wait to grab with both hands i've now seen swatches of some of the highlighters the white one that looks horrifyingly glittery and sparkly so that's gone straight out the window and the coral one or the like the peachier one looks phenomenal perfect it looks so smooth so subtle and pretty that one we talked about that in the previous video you know i'm all over those highlighters okay then i saw these blushes <gasps> oh Yes, please, look at it, it's so beautiful. Glorious, I'm absolutely obsessed. I will say I have seen some pretty questionable swatches of these that confused me for a second, but that like neutral peachy looking one, regardless, that's coming home with me. I feel like some products don't swatch as well as they actually appear on the cheek, especially when it comes to blushes, the Dior Backstage being a perfect example, swatch horribly, but I love them on the cheeks. So I'm hoping this is gonna be one of those. I don't know that the, I mean, the plummy one in this picture is an absolute no, like that's not my, my shade of blush at all. I'm not drawn to that one, but then the swatch actually looked nicer than I expected, but I'm all over that peachy, uh, like neutral one. That is 100% coming home with me immediately, instantly the second I can get my greedy grubby little paws on it okay that it's yeah yes yes please I've also seen like a sneak peek of another blush that was just this gorgeous flowery thing I don't dare to post that one yet because I think it's very very you know illegal because I think it's very very new and not many people have posted it yet so I daren't show you that one but <laughs> Chanel really want like our entire payslip this year all of it. They don't want any left for the tax man. They just want the whole payslip, all of it. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm giving them a lot of it. Okay, next up, we have an upcoming, incoming, imminent mascara from Benefit. This is the FanFest mascara. <laughs> they hooked me in already, okay. I 100% know Benefit can bring out a banging mascara. There are several mascaras from Benefit that I have absolutely loved over the years. I'm currently obsessed with Roller Lash. That's one of my absolute favourites. I also loved, was it Bad Gal Bang? That was Benefit, right? That was amazing. They've brought out some incredible mascaras over the years. If, if you can count on Benefit for one thing or two things, brows and mascara. They will never fail you in those categories, okay? So there's that. Benefit Mascara immediately catches my attention. And then this brush. Oh, that looks like a good, you know when you just see a mascara brush or a, like a wand and you think that's, that is my kind of brush from mascara. I feel like we all have our 
preferences when it comes to a mascara brush. Some like a big fat bristly one. Some like rubberized bristles, that's me. Some like the little comby ones, that's also me a lot of the time. Some people love an hourglass. We're all so different in what we like, but a lot of us, we see a brush and we just know. We know that is for us. That's my kind of mascara brush. And this is mine. It also claims to be like their most fanning mascara. Mascara for a fanned out lash. And it just all sounds like good news to me. It claims to comb through and lengthen and extend while ensuring each individual lash is clump free. Define separation. This all just sounds fantastic. So this is a yes, okay? <laughs> it's no question about it. This is 100% yes, count me in. Sign me up, put my name down on the list yet again. I want it. I just love mascara. So good. Next up, let's talk about this Shantakai Mustang Sally. No, it's just Mustang. There's no Sally. Sally was not available, very sadly. Presumably running all over town, putting her flat feet on the ground. <laughs> but enough about Sally, back to the makeup. So essentially what we've got here is we've got some single eyeshadows, some are matte, some are shimmer, and then we've got a couple of their, you know, balmy type tinted lip situations. So the lips are immediately out, like I've got those, I don't need those, nothing revolutionary when it comes to the colours. They are a nice formula, I like it, sure, but I don't need them. They're not wowing me. They're nothing that I don't already have 48,000 of. Now, as usual with Chantikai, we've got these stunning photos of horses. <laughs> I love a good horse. I do. I love a horse. Love it. Can't get enough of them. Love to give one a carrot and a pat. Plat its mane. Ride it through the fields. I love it, okay? But you're not going to trick me. Okay, we've talked about this in my You Don't Need That videos, where we slap a picture of an animal on makeup packaging and suddenly we all want to buy it because we love the animal, especially if it's a baby one. We are especially partial and influenced by baby animals. That's what I've learned. So we're gonna pretend we don't see the horses, these glorious manes flapping in the wind, the rearing up. It's just all a glorious feast for the eyes. But essentially what we've got here is very, very average eyeshadow shades, a nice formula, but we've all got a million of these and these are very expensive for a single eyeshadow, almost $60. Is that correct? Have I made that number up? Doesn't seem right. Yeah, so I do not need these. These are a pass. I'm like saving my money for the Natasha Denona Mini. I could have three of those, okay? Three of those. I, I only need one, because what would be the point? But you, you, get my, you get my meaning. I don't need these. I've got these shades. 4,000 times, palettes for less money than one of these. Um, without the horse, sure, but I would rather go and see a real horse in the field, you know? So you're not catching me out with that one. And now finally, we come to one of the biggest controversies in the history of makeup. It's Pat McGrath's Sunlit Seduction and I'm almost terrified to open this can of worms here on my channel because let me tell you, the people are cross. They are furious. It was very much makeup bags at dawn yesterday when Pat McGrath posted the reveal of this palette. <laughs> I could smell the comment section from a million miles away. I knew exactly where that comment section was going. I could smell it and it smelt of disappointment and rage. An alarming combination if ever I've seen one. The people were up in arms. They were furious. Let me tell you, my Instagram has been dying a death recently. My posts are really getting very, very minimal interaction. It's really just me, my sister, a couple of my friends liking them at this point, okay? I've been thinking of binning the thing like all together because it's just utterly useless. I'm just, yeah, I'm not good at Instagram is what we've learned. So when I posted this, my comment section, I've never seen the likes of the activity for months. It literally got double the amount of interaction on it, any post in about five minutes than I usually get over like a week or two, okay? And it was all hate comments, 
hate and rage filled comments. People are so disappointed and I completely get it. I understand. I have many thoughts on this palette. So here are a few. One, it obviously is a very familiar, a very similar colour story to the previous like two or three palettes. Motherships and quads and kind of limited edition palettes included, it's very similar lines, very similar colour stories to like the like five or six palettes that have been re recently released, motherships and quads. I get it. It is that pinks and golds again that everybody has been begging and pleading Pat to give us something different and she didn't she gave us something very very similar again so I understand why some people are really disappointed I'm really not one of them I'll say that I know that I'm in the minority but I think this is stunning glorious and these are like my absolute favorite shades so I'm personally not really disappointed because this is just you know you could give me 58 of these sort of color stories and it will just make all my dreams come true I just love these color stories they're what I wear day to day they're my most like chosen my most drawn to colors and I think this looks stunning you know color story re repetition aside this looks like a stunning palette I could do without the crimson ecstasy shade that really hot pink I could do without that one but that being sort of one of her more like crystal shadows they don't always look on the lids how they swatch because they tend to have like shifts in them and things so I'm going to give it a try I 100% will pick this up I do think often with these palettes they aren't as similar as they appear on paper when you first see them but without question it is you know it's a pink and gold color story so it is obviously very repetitive I think you know Pat is not stupid that's number one obviously these color stories are where the brand is going and staying it seems it seems like that's what Pat wants to put out these type of very wearable pretty feminine pinky gold combination colors is where the brand is going they're like sticking to it okay despite the protests they are hammering that to the wall it's going on the gravestone okay I sympathize I empathize I understand people's disappointment when that's not really your color story or it is but you just don't want five or six of it and you wish that there would have been something that you could have been more excited about I totally understand it and I myself despite being a lover of this color story would have preferred absolutely no lies told I would have preferred a different color story as well because I do have these from Pat McGrath I'll take them all but I do obviously have this type of color story from Pat McGrath so I myself even though I love this color story would have actually preferred something that I don't have from the brand maybe khakis and greens that seems to be something that lots of people are crying out for personally what I've been begging for for years is like a very wearable that's fine big selling color story neutral palette give me all of these crystally shimmery sparkly amazingness in a neutral browns color story let me tell you that would be the biggest seller of the year Pat McGrath I think what people are really getting cross about is that obviously the message has been going for a long time the last two three years even all of Pat McGrath's like big hardcore fan base have been saying please give us something different please no more pinks and gold please give us a different color story for the motherships and it seems and it feels like that's falling on deaf ears that she's not listening and that's strange because I will say that Pat McGrath tends to be a brand that does listen you know we begged for blushes she gave us blushes we begged for bronzers she gave us bronzers we begged for a restock of lip products she gave us a big restock of lip products so it's odd to me that that one request and begging and, and a lot a lot of huge amount of people asking constantly we want something different please don't want pigs and go is the one thing that seems to be being completely ignored by the brand it's interesting but you know it's a brand they need to make money and this is what sells it's popular obviously if you don't like it if you have a lot of this color story you do not have to buy it you don't even have to buy it on sale just because it's Pat McGrath and you support the brand or you love the brand you love her eyeshadows if this is something that you don't need and you've got five similar palettes from the brand it's absolutely okay to pass on it for sure and that's ultimately the most powerful vote if you are sick to death of this color story and you don't buy it, you know, vote with your money.
That's what I say. But personally, this is, as you know, my absolute dream favourite colour story. And as you guys know, I didn't keep my Hutopian Dream palette. So, you know, that's one less that I don't already have. So I will say Pat McGrath's comment section is like, oh my goodness, it's a lot, okay? There is really very minimal positivity on any of the posts that I've seen of this palette. So do I think Pat McGrath reads her Instagram comments or even manages her own Instagram account? No, I don't. Will she be made aware of the reaction to the palette? I'm 100% sure. If not, something terribly is going wrong. I'm sure at this point she cannot not know that the people are furious. The people are out with their pitchforks and their bronzer brushes demanding better, demanding different, okay? So I think at this point, although like people have been saying no more pinks and golds for a while, I've never heard it as loud and as angry and as disappointed and as negative as what I've seen in the comment sections on the release of this palette in particular. So I'd be absolutely flabbergasted if this wasn't the end of it, but... <laughs> We'll wait and see, she's a brave lady. So there you have it. Those are all of the new and upcoming makeup releases that I wanted to talk to you about today. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this Pat McGrath situation? I feel like we all agree at this point, it's, it's enough, it's enough pink and golds, even for those of us who are obsessed with them, it's enough, you know? But let us know in the comments section, that's your place to share your opinion and your views as always. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.